or any of my brain to stir fry so. <laughs> so Louise was hit in the head today. Um, I hit myself in the head today. in the head today with a bar uh, because I wasn't really concentrating and it was here and I was pushing it up and it smacked ow, mm. right into my nose and I think I might be slightly concussed my nose is swollen and it's really sore for me to make this face oh, um, don't do it, don't do it. so if anything happens here Surprising. today yeah. I'll make this a surprise face. <gasps> anyway, so today, what are we doing today? Huh? Well, what are we drinking, first of all? Um, we've got, I, I can't pronounce it. It's one of these other things that I can't pronounce. We've got a Nebbiolo, but. which is the grape that's used to make Barolo, Barbaresco, but it's not from Barolo or Barbaresco. It's from a slightly different part of Italy. It's Lange. <laughs> So the scrapes obviously used to make big, giant. Yeah. So wines. these ones are a little bit less big and giant than a little bit sort of more pinot like than the Barolos and the Barbarescos. They've still got the kind of red fruit flavours. Um, this one's incredibly well. It's it's quite pale actually. You can see right through the glass. Um, it does actually look a bit like Pinot Noir. So. Um, we're going to drink this tonight, but we're also going to talk about um, flavour compounds in wine. In order to prepare you for next week's drink along. <laughs> so that you can go, hmm, I think you guys are full of shit. <laughs> yes, but with conviction. Yeah, and you're going to know that we're full of shit rather than just su suspecting that we're full of shit. Yeah. So, um, we'll so, start off by trying this wine and yeah. seeing what it tastes like. Yeah. Um, so basically this week's all about expanding your palate, mm -hmm. I think. If any of you... Oh, that smells good. And flavour compounds in mine a little bit too. Well, that... that but you explain... Yes. But, I mean, I'm thinking about like the clickbait header here. Oh. Flavour compounds in wine doesn't really sell it the way it's expanding your palate. But yes. we're not all about clickbait. What does that smell like to you? Kind of red fruits, strawberries. What what one predominantly? What red fruit predominantly? I just said strawberries. But I think it it's more cherries. Smell it smells like cherries and raspberries overwhelmingly to me. Mm. Oh, that's good. Mm. It is light and pinot like, isn't it? It is quite pinot like. It's a little bit more full bodied than than pinot. Quite nice, well rounded mm. tannins. Um, do you like that? Mm -hmm. I like it too. Juicy, tasty. I think there's a bit of complexity there. And almost like a kind of savoury-ish, like a slight bitterness. And the finish is pretty good. Okay. Again, Louise and I have just finished our level two, so... We're um, full of this chat. Yeah, it's it's hard for us just to drink wine the way we used to drink it. Um, You know, like, I don't know if anybody plays music, but the second you start, like, learning how to play music, you're... You start analysing the music instead of just going like that. <laughs> what would you do normally? <laughs> you start going, oh, that drum beat's really interesting. It's good Why that you it? and I never met in a nightclub. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway. So, basically, just to kind of briefly synopsize, uh, I don't know if that's a word. Synopsize? Synopsize. Oh, we should say we got this wine from Max at Coliseum Wines. We have yet to have a bad wine from Max. That is true. That is true. Right, so basically, when you when you press grape juice out of a grape, when you start with your with your grape juice, that just tastes sweet and grapey. Okay, so we're sitting here and we're swishing the wine around the glass and going, mm, it tastes like strawberries and raspberries and pepper, and it has a this and that, and a lot of people, including myself, kind of must wonder. Um, how does it end up smelling and tasting of all of those things? It's kind of weird. You would imagine that it would just taste like alcoholic grape juice, but it does not. Sometimes um, 
and really really cheap mass produced wines they do add a little bit of flavour but we're talking about it from just the grape point of view yeah we're like, talking about no it from the perspective of like quality um winey wine quality winey wine the kind of wine that we're drinking on this youtube production because i think a lot of people are like oh does it really taste like all these different things how can it because it's just from grapes they haven't added strawberries to it so i've talked before about the basically you crush the grapes you get the juice um, and yeast is either added or it's in there naturally the yeast eats the sugar and excretes it or poops it out and that poop becomes alcohol well actually that process produces a great number of chemical compounds um, and so that's just one of the ways that the chemical complexity of the wine changes so you have your fermentation You've also got other things like your malolactic fermentation, um, which eats malic acid, poops out lactic acid, gives creamy notes, uh, buttery and, and different things like that. You've got the lees contact, which is the, the dead yeast cells and how long you leave them in contact with the wine. You've got the fining, the finishing process. You've got, um, if, the, if the wine's stored in wood, that can impart flavours on it. So there's so many different things, but basically, your grape juice, when you turn it into wine, becomes a lot more chemically complex. Um, and if you break break that all down, you pull apart the different chemical elements and the, uh, the different component parts, those things smell of things. You know, like when you have your strawberry flavoured shampoo or your strawberry scented mm. shampoo, probably doesn't have any strawberries in it. It probably just has a chemical in there that smells like strawberries. So similar to your wine but a more natural process and you end up with and actually scientists have pulled it all apart and they found in there uh, things that smell like strawberries but things as diverse as white pepper uh, blueberries you know all sorts of different weird stuff toast is that enough of an explanation i think that's a great explanation yeah well so um you've got your your wines that taste like red fruits you've got your pinot noir you've got your um, your Nebbiolo, you've got your Tempranillo, your Grenache, all these ones have kind of predominantly red fruit flavours as well as other kind of um, kind of more complex flavours that come in a lot of different ways, could be due to the, the way that the wines, I'm starting to lose it now, um, could be, and but all <laughs> <laughs> So what we've got in front of us here are some, just some different fruits and some different jams. So I'm going to highlight here the fact that if we go on to do our level three, we'll, we'll have to analyse some wines and Heather will be better at that because she eats all this shit, whereas I don't. For years <laughs> and years and years, I wouldn't eat anything that was red that didn't also come in green. So I could eat apples and I could eat peppers. But I didn't like strawberries. I didn't like. I still don't really don't like, like raspberries. No, that's like a recent thing. Um, I I wasn't really that into red stuff. Uh, tomatoes. I hate tomatoes. I kind of almost got there with tomatoes you now. You eat tomatoes and things. And I you had tomatoes. tomatoes the other day. And I think it's because I was scarred. I was like traumatized as a child because my sister used to like tomato sauce so much, and she used to always have it like all over her face and like all over. Her She'd run around, and I think that, that that's disgusting. No, that's really hard. I'm just your sister. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> I thought that would be funny when I said it, and then it came out, and I was like, too harsh. Too harsh. <laughs> that's disgusting. <laughs> that's disgusting. But um, so I think that's where my like kind of strange, <laughs> strange like red. I also I'm not like a giant fan of fruit, like. I like strawberries, but plus cream, and I like apples, but plus peanut butter. Luckily, we've got cream in the in the fridge. And do hey, you know that's, what? That's finished. What? <laughs> Are you serious? I've just been scooting a bit into my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was really looking forward to strawberries and cream tonight. It's probably a little bit. But... I'm gonna fucking kill you. There's no ice cream left either because Louise tanned it for our lunch. Has <laughs> <laughs> bought that as well. Sometimes. What are we having for dessert? Have you planned something? <laughs> I've got a sore nose. 
got, I got a really sore nose. <laughs> right, what are we going to do first? Anyway, I right, you, uh, so what yeah. I wanted to say was all this jammy shit, I don't have any experience <laughs> with. So when people turn around and they go, oh, that's like blackcurrant jam, I'm like, because uh, I don't have any relevance point. Um, the other thing that we, I, w- I was almost getting by the end of our level two is when it's been like a warmer climate, it tends to be more towards like the jammy, jammy fruit. So again, to, to help you fake it at any sort of wine stuff, if it's from like, if you think hot country, just, just say something like uh, dark fruits, but like kind of cooked jammy dark fruits and that'll get you there. It's either uh, warmer countries or um, kind of riper fruit and that's what produces the kind of, and you can kind of talk about how ripe the fruit tastes or smells. So what we thought would be fun, I don't know if anybody's seen the Gary Vaynerchuk um, YouTube where he basically like eats everything and licks everything in the planet. This is going to be less fun because uh, he starts off with things like blueberries and blueberry jam and he finishes with things like dirt and stones and rubber. Black cherry, another classic, always makes me think of Bordeaux. Let's move on. What's this? Strawberry paper. It's important because this helps you, and even, you know what? Wet paper. The terroir, the dirt, the soil, that's how you really get in. This is fine New Jersey wine right here. That's right, you gotta eat the dirt because that's how you really get in there, and that's how you know where it's coming from. Um, it's imperative, and now some 99 Cristal, baby. <laughs> so we got a few things tonight to experiment with. That you can do this at home if you, if you so wish, <laughs> and you have access to lots of jam. Um, I just, I'm so pumped about all this jam now. Like I bought three different kinds of jam. I'm gonna have jam every day. Oh, that smells really like raspberries. Right, well, do you wanna smell the fresh raspberries? Mm-hmm. Right, and then the, the cooked jammy raspberries. Mm-hmm. Do you want to taste the difference between the raspberries and okay. the raspberry jam? But I don't really like jam. Mm-hmm. I'm doing this for the vlog. Right. I'm gonna do like raspberries. I'm not, I'm not a fan. Mm. A little dirty on your mouth, it's just Pardon? Mm. And you can taste the similarity between that and that, actually, and the raspberry jam. Try not I to. only want a tiny, tiny bit. Look, there's nothing on that spoon. <laughs> <sighs> Blueberries, like, if you've got a kind of um, a Grand Reserva Tempranillo, you sometimes get wee kind of blueberry notes in there. That's a kind of more confected smell. I'm not actually a massive fan of strawberry jam. Now we're starting to talk about jams rather than talking about wines. I mean, the idea behind like all these kind of tasting notes and stuff is so that you can describe the wine, so you can remember it, so you can tell people it. You know, it's. It's, it's so it kind of categorises it a little bit for you. You kind of described it as like, you know, when you start to learn about music, you kind of analyse the music. It hasn't taken away my enjoyment of wine. Um, oh, no, yeah, it just... I still do this when I'm drinking wine. <laughs> <laughs> the very exciting part of the episode. Very exciting Our palettes part. are cleansed now, so we're back on the wine. Next week... Uh, Next week. We, we asked, and uh, you said I so... We're gonna do a drink along episode. So, we we've had a few people mention that we should do it live, but unfortunately Heather and I are so offensive live. If you meet us, you'll understand. <laughs> so so what we're gonna do is we're gonna um, record a, an episode, and then release it at half past seven on a Friday night. And mm-hmm. um, we're gonna give you the wine ahead, like a week ahead. So we're giving you next week's wine this week. And so far, everybody voted for Prira, apart from one person. But don't worry, because we're going to do Malbec. So, so um, next Friday, we're going to be drinking this bottle. Um, we'll give you all the information you need to find it. Uh, and get a hold of this this exact bottle. You can drink the exact same thing as us. If you can't find this one, then go to your local supermarket. Go go to your local wine shop and try and find a Prira. Prira. 
um, because it's quite a small region and you, you'll get the gist. Um, and we, we love Pera, don't we? We fucking adore Pera. This bottle... Um, we bought it from Good, Good Spirits. That's where we got it from the first time. So yep, we can all join this together next Friday at half past seven. The snacks that we will be accompanying, I know that's what everybody cares about. Yeah. Will be... Cheese. We haven't had cheese for ages. We haven't had cheese for ages. With Jacob's crackers and blue cheese, preferably um, a Stilton. If you don't like that, just have some cheese. Um, we may put also... some jam on it. <laughs> no, <laughs> no jam. goes tits up we're sorry and just to uh, clarify as well we'll be really happy if you go in and see jane um and sam and oh and tell her why you're drinking it tell tell them why you're why you're buying this <laughs>